Hey and welcome to this tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be talking about when to combine objects and when it's best to separate them out. Just a reminder that if you like my content please be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's always appreciated. This topic is something which I'm always considering as I model as the way you approach this is either going to make your life super hard or easier as you move down the pipeline and it's really dependent on how you split up your meshes. The main concept, and it's incredibly simple, is to mainly just think about how your object would be split up in the real world. For example, just looking around my room now, I can see a lava lamp, and the question would be, if I'm modeling this, should the glass be separate from the metal top and bottom? And the answer is, based on real life, yes. It really is that simple, and that's the general approach. But why is it so important? Okay, so take my coffee machine. There's two of them here and one of them is in a group and the other one is combined. You might think that it's easier to just keep everything combined like this. I mean, it is all one coffee machine and makes sense to sort of group it by itself. But this really isn't great practice. In reality, you're making your life so much harder doing this. And one of the reasons why this is making your life harder is that it's not great when it comes to shader assignment. On the uncombined version, it's super easy, we can just let the parts we want and just give it this light grey colour. Simple. On this combined mesh, we need to go into face select mode and assign shaders by the polygons. Not so simple. But doable, yes. Where this becomes much more of an issue is, say, in a production pipeline where shaders are being assigned by material tags within the names of the individual objects. So obviously selecting the faces just wouldn't work. It's also much harder if you were to pass this object onto someone else. They'd have to know exactly which polygons needed to be each material. Say you had like 5,000 screws on a robot and you had to go through individually and select them all by face. That's not very efficient and it would be difficult even if you were the original artist to work on the model. But say you were ingesting this from another company and it was just a combined mesh, it's going to be a nightmare trying to figure out what's what. Alternatively, handing over the mesh, grouped or named by material, that person would know straight away what should be what as it would be like model A has shader Y assigned to it. So although it can seem tempting just to kind of like combine everything together, give it one name, I hope this video sort of shines some light on why you might want to group objects up by materials or just leave everything individual and name everything specifically so that it's easier to pick up later on. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more production workflow tutorials. And until then, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.